Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part two of the really exciting page in Fairy Touch of Magic where if you caught um, part one I had like really pushed myself to the limit and um, we'd started this page and um, <coughs> I'm absolutely loving how it turned out. Now off camera in between part one and part two I went in with the same colours and just added more depth to it. So I just went over a few more layers over using the same colours is what I'm trying to say. Um, just so that the background was a little bit brighter because I want the dress to remain looking ivory or white. And for the rest of the image we are going to use um, fairly bright colours I think um, to um, really establish that that dress is very pale and white, almost like there's, a, you know, I don't know, netting over the top of it or something. So our wedding dress remains looking bright and beautiful. So um, I think what I'll do is the bits that I know what colours they've got to be next. So we've got the tree branch, tree branch as this one, and we've got this one here. So I think we'll do that next, and then. Um, this little lady here and I'm thinking that what I'm actually going to do is these leaves are going to be the same as what's in the dress so it pulls it all together I think at the moment that's my plan so if I come in I've got an array of pencils here but don't don't be put off by it it's it's, it's really it's it's not hard it's going to be easy the way that I break it down and we do it in in little bits so I think from darkest to lightest I've got black dark brown, then we've got, um, oh sorry, black espresso dark brown, then we've got um, chocolate, I might not use all these, but chocolate, um, light umber, burnt ochre, we've got a tiny bit of kelp green, and a very stubby putty beige. <laughs> please don't be put off by it um, I'm going to break it down into little sections so that we can um, so you can work you can you can work through it with me and I'm just going to put a little touch of kelp green on there just so it adds interest and plus I saw Chris Chang do it <laughs> so yeah well you can't go can't go wrong if you're following a Chris Chang can you so um, these are my colours I haven't taken them from anybody else it was just on my little practice sheet this is what it's going to turn out looking like and I know that looks scary but it's going to be fine so I'm going to take my piece of paper just to protect the page behind and put that there and I'm going in I'm going to leave the black till last and I'm going in with espresso now we've got a branch coming off this one so I'm going to make this section dark around here um, and just pull that espresso out I'm just trying to think remember how I did it on my practice bit um, I've had to step away for um, two days because um, I was practicing and getting myself in a tiz because I was so pleased with how it was coming out I didn't want to wreck the page and um, everything I tried seemed to look rubbish compared to what I'd already done so I just stepped away for a bit and that really helps it's a good tip there folks okay so I'm not worrying at the moment I'm not worrying about um, Clara's lines and where to put anything else I'm just putting the espresso in on the bottom of the branch we're going to come round here too and we're going to come round that little knot there and we'll have a little bit going up there and carefully round the raspberries which I should have coloured but I haven't So, okay, and now let's, we're going to work down our list. So now I'm going to add some dark brown to that um, and just come out slightly. And then bringing that out just in sort of random patches will make him a little bit darker. 
no sort of rhyme and reason to it just yet. Just bringing that dark brown out, going over the espresso. And I want to leave a little bit there that I can get a light patch there so it looks like that that is a dark hole in our tree. That's the idea anyway, whether it works out or, or not, I don't know. Okay, let's have a little bit now of chocolate. We we'll start going into our reds. So, our red browns rather. So now I'm going to start to pick out some of those lines. So there's a darker bit under here, so I'll put that in there. But I'm going to try and avoid going near the top because that's where I want the light to be. So I'm just sort of really just randomly squashing it in. Okay, so we don't need too much of any of the colours really. Um, then we've got um, light umber. And we'll put that in. Put a little bit of that light umber in that knot there. And remember I want to leave a, the top part quite light for our putty, putty beige. Okay, then I'm going to add a little bit of burnt ochre just in some of those spots that we've just put the light umber. And that'll just add some different, a different um, tone to it, if that's the right word, tone, hint, tone, hue, I don't know. Okay, putty beige. Right, let's get that in before we go any further now. So I'm going to put those few bits of really light areas in and then we can play with our darks and have some fun bringing out some of that wood. Okay, there's our putty. Right, before we go in with our darks, let's just add some kelp green. So I think I'm going to put some in here, just under our bug. This really lifts it and just sort of gives a little bit more authenticity to what we're trying to achieve. So you don't need much. I don't want it to look green, but I just want it, that hint of sort of moss growing on it, you know, or algae, lichen. Um, Okay, so let's now go back. I want some black. So I'm going to add some black in now, around the bottom here. And I can just see, like, some of Clara's lines left. So I'm going to put those in with a light bit of black. Come around this bit. I'm just going to have to twizzle you around a little bit. Um, I'm going to focus around the bottom here. around that leaf. So anywhere I think would be really dark, I'm going to go in. And I'm doing it really lightly, that way if it's too much, I can just shade over it. But I'm just pulling out those lines. And can you see the difference that makes? It's a bit of a sort of a wow moment, isn't it really? You get that black in there. Okay, and then just um, a touch of the espresso again, because that's got a lovely sort of um, brown hue to it, brown grey hue to it, the espresso. We can bring out just that tiny bit more detail. There's a little knot there, we can put that in. And then um, I'm going to go back in with my kelp green. And some of those putty areas we can make green. There. 
There we go. What do you think, folks? You can go back in with putty if you want. I know people moan about the Prismas, but they are a pleasure to work with, I have to say. They really are. Um, I don't think they, I think they blend like no other on earth. Okay. And that, those, that black will just sort of really define our Park. There we go. Oh my goodness, can you hear that rain? Wow. Yeah, we've been blessed with beautiful weather here in the UK. So I'll just do this little bit with you. And then um, I can finish the tiny bits off off camera. So same, same order. I'm going back in with the espresso and... Um, what I'm doing is picking out the bottom part of the branch and making that my darkest point. And I'm going to cross that over like that's where the new branch meets. Be careful not to go over our leaves or... And I'm not going to bring it up round there, I'm going to make that bit lighter because it's met that dark bit of the tree there. Okay, um, then we did dark brown, didn't we? A little bit of dark brown. A bit more cautious with this one because we've got such a little space to do it in. Okay, chocolate for our beautiful red hues. We're going to need space, don't forget, for that, um, I want to get that, um, the green in and the putty. So I'm just sort of dotting it about, um, here's our light umber. I'm just doing that really lightly. And then our burnt ochre. It's just to give us a variation really, just so the tree's not so flat. And I hope it's worked. Um, right, putty beige. Let's get that light colour in and blend that. I want under that little bug to be quite dark, don't I really? Not light, no, you can have a little shadow. Bit of espresso, okay. And then let's turn to our black. So I'm going to bring that down. And we can put like, there's a little bit of a, a V in the pattern in there, put that in. around here and where that meets Not there. okay and then go back with our espresso so I've left this bit because I want that I don't want that to sort of just disappear into the ether so I'm going to go back in with my burnt ochre and bring that down And then our putty. And I'm not really liking that really light bit there, so um, I'm going to go in with some kelp green. And we can have some under our bug as well, that'll solve that issue. But 
put a little bit more green on this branch, I think, just because. There we go, and let's go in with some dark brown just in that little pattern there that we've got. There we go. Alright, one tree branch. Now, I have to make the decision, are the leaves, these leaves, these ones, going to be the same as this? And I think that's what I'm going to do. So, as in part one, I'm going to take those uh, colours, which I do believe were these, if I'm correct. It was dark green, Kelly green and uh, Pale Sage, I think. Okay, so let's just to recap quickly before I go off and do them. I'm going to take my dark green, let's give that a stem, and I'm going to, this side is going to be much lighter. So I'm going to start with my dark green up the centre. It's going to be lighter because I'm going to make that a light source. I wasn't going to, but I am going to. Um, just because how the background evolved around it, we made it sort of slightly glow. So it's not going to be too in your face. Just a gentle little lamp she's got going on there while she's doing all her dress alterations. <laughs> so that was um, dark green. This is Kelly green. And just on this instance, I might add some yellow here. So pale sage. Yeah, I think that's right. Pale sage. And then I think I might just add a touch of um, yellow chartreuse, which has got a greeny hue to it. Just because it's right down by that light source. And then just blend back over with the Kelly Green and the Sage. Pale Sage. Okay. Just because that will give us a nicer glow. There we go. That one's on top of it, so I don't need to worry about that. So let's go back to our colours now. So this is dark green again. Put that down the centre. And then I'm going to come up the edge this side. Put that dark green in there. Then we're going to have Kelly Green. I can't remember if we used anything lighter or if that was... I think we might have actually used the... Um, yeah, I think I got that wrong. I think it was that, Sap Green. Maybe, I can't remember. <laughs> and then um, grey green light. I don't think we use that on the leaves. Can't remember. No. Hmm. Anyway, let's darken that up and I'll work it out. So that's dark green again. Dark green. I know it was Kelly green. And then I think it was, um, and I think it was pale sage. I think that we used. Okay. Let me try another one because I can't remember if it was pale sage we went to or sap green light. Might have been sap green light. Let's try that. So we'll do this one, so I'm going to come down here on this side, bring that dark green out a little bit. Sorry about my phone going off. Okay, I do have um, an app to take out background noise, um, but of late it just does not want to work, I don't know why, it'll just sit there for hours spinning around saying cleaning audio cleaning audio and nothing's happened happening so sap green light so um yeah i think 
we then went in with, um, I think we must have gone in with a grey green light. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And I'm going to deepen that up. A bit more Kelly green. There we go. All right. And then we're going to come in the opposite way for this one. So we'll go in with our dark green. Kelly green. And um, sap green light. And then our grey green. I don't think it is exactly the same combination, but that will be good because then they just won't look the same. Nevertheless, it's a very pretty combination either way, so we'll stick with it. There we go. Um, we can add a little bit more Kelly Green. If we've washed it out too much like that. There we go. We don't want... There. That's pretty, isn't it? That's a pretty combo. So, our job is to finish the branch um, and to colour all of the leaves, not these ones down here, these like little acorny ones and that long one. I'm going to do a different colour, I think. But all the leaves, other than that, and those ones at the side, don't do those, we'll do those different too, in that combination. And then we'll meet back up and um, we'll do some more. All right, folks, see you in a sec. Okay, you guys, so I've finished the trees and the leaves. Now it's time to bite the bullet and just get on with it. <laughs> I'm so scared of messing it up. Okay, so if we come in, I think we only have one option left, and that is to focus on our little fairy lady. So um, I've got... Um, so from darkest to lightest, I have got um, henna, I've got burnt ochre, and then we've got the light colours, which is deco pink, um, light peach, cream, and cream. <laughs> Just cream, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to go in with our light peach to start with. And I might do a little bit of work around her eyes because I think her eyelids are just too dark for me. So I'm just going in really lightly with light peach. And I'm going to coat her entire little face with peach. Well, light peach actually. And what I'm going to do is just take my white Posca and I'm just going to... Um, lighten those eyelids and then let that dry okay so just lighten them so they're not white they're just they've just been lightened so we'll focus on the cheeks while we're waiting for the posca to dry so I'm just making sure I've got enough light peach down and I'm going to avoid that wet bit of posca okay and I'm going to go in with burnt ochre around her hair very carefully. This will give us a nice sort of peachy glow when we add the other colours on top. And we'll go in, can you see? Yeah, we'll go in round her hairline. I don't know what colour her hair is going to be yet. We'll see as she comes to life. But she gets her character builds with colour. We might decide what colour she'll be. So I want a little bit of burnt ochre on this side too, but maybe not quite as much. Okay. 
and then over that we're going to go back in with our light peach do a bit of blending through I'm just leaving those eyelids alone for the time being until I am um, I'm sure that that Posca's dry okay we need to do her neck as well I forgot about that so the same process light peach bit of burnt ochre for our shadows there we go nice and simple then I'm going to take our deco pink and it is deco pink isn't it yeah and just go over that very cute. A little bit of cream to push into those um, lighter areas. How's our Posca doing? Okay it's dry. And then we'll go back in with our peach, our light peach, over those eyes, eyelids. They look better, just that little bit lighter. They were very, her eyes were very dark. Okay, and then just for good measure, a tiny, tiny little bit of um, henna, really lightly. I don't want to overwhelm her with um, too much rosiness. Okay, and then to and then push that all together with our light peach again. We could try a little bit of pink on those eyelids. But I just think it's better that they're lighter. Have a little bit of pink on her nose. And then I'm just going to sharpen the um, henna. I will smooth it all out. I know it's looking a bit bumpy. So I'm going to take the cream and let's just smooth that out. There she is. And now a nice sharp henna. And I'm just going to put that on our little fairy's lips. Like there we go, and a tiny bit of that pink. Okay, and then we've got our arms to do. So, light peach, same process. Light peach. And on our little legs. Up to our socks, can you see? Yeah. Sorry, I have to keep faffing about. Okay. Then I want the burnt ochre. That's going to be our shadows. So underneath the dress, just lightly the underside of her arm and under her sleeve. She might have a little bit in there. Under the blackberry, raspberry, whatever it is. And the joint of her arm there. And same with her legs. She's going to have shadow, more shadow down here. And then under her dress the fold of her leg. And we'll go back in with our light peach. Blend that through. And then we'll 
add a little bit of the blush, uh, sorry, deco pink to that. And then a tiny bit of cream. Okay, I'm just going to go back in with that. Oh, henna. Let's do a bit of henna. I'm just going to use that very sparingly because it's very red. But it will just help to deepen up our skin. And I'll do the, um, the little pins with... Um, gel pen at the end. Okay, a little bit of light peach. Okay, I think, I think she's more or less there folks. Something's going on on this cheek here and I'm not quite sure whether there's just doesn't seem to want to blend out nicely there. But I'm going to leave her because you know what happens, you faff and fuss. Okay, she is going to be pink. So I have got these colours. From darkest to lightest. I've got mahogany red. Now that's for our shadows. Then I've got hot pink, then I've got pink, and I've got a blush pink. And we're going to do her hat and her dress in the pink. And that's as far as I've got. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn the page slightly so it's a little bit more comfortable. And I'm going to go in with our hot pink. Let's just go straight in for it, shall we? Hot pink. Okay. So I'm going to put that where I want it to be darkest at the moment. But I want, like I said, I wanted a lot of um, a lot of um, bright colours, but I want them to be quite warm colours um, so to make the dress look even more like it's white or ivory. This is pink. So I'm just going back over that. And then the blush, which is a more of a um, sort of peachy pink. And that will become even more apparent, those colours, when we go in with mahogany. So this is mahogany red. And I'm just lightly going to add that in as our shadow colour. Even put a little bit on her that blotchy cheek there. Let's try that. There's something on the page there. A bit of oils maybe or something. Then back in with the hot pink. Go over that. No, I don't want hot pink on her cheek. <laughs> and then pink. And then our um, blush pink. Okay, back in mahogany. All right. Okay, so let's do a dress. So hot pink, let's go in where we're going to want it darkest. Okay, so under our arm. Some of these little folds. Okay, 
Let's give her some crinkly bits on her dress. Then we're going to go back over that hot pink with our pink. And then our blush pink. I think I might add some white. I think I've just been a bit too heavy handed with the dark pinks. Okay, where's my white? Here it is. Let's add a little bit of white in. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that brings out that like peachy tone of the blush. And then we'll go in with our mahogany. We'll cover those. Um, black lines there we go and we can go back in with hot pink over that Cute, cute little fairy dress. I will um, do the details with um, paint pen, Posca pen, or paint pen at the end. I might put a little bit of that. That might work actually. Blush pink on her. Yeah, on her eyelids. That's better. Okay. So, in order that I keep the blush pink on a little hat, I'm going to go in entirely, cover it with blush pink. This is our lightest shade here. Let's get a very light coat of that down. Have a sip of drink. <laughs> It's madness that I've coloured this page and then I'm so scared of ruining it. Like I said, I had to step away. Um, and I planned it, got the colours, but I'm so frightened that I was, I'm going to get it wrong. And I think actually the more you worry about stuff like that, the more likely it is that you are going to do that. So... I'm just going to take my colours that I've practised with that I liked and I'm just going to go for it. So a little bit of hot pink on each side of the hat. Then we're going to go in with pink. And together they make a bit of a bombshell of pink, don't they? Look at that beautiful colour. Bring out the creases a little bit in the hat. There we go. And I'm just going to put the blush back in. And then we'll put that mahogany red in. There we go. So round the bottom. That works so well as a as a shadow for pink or as a uh, what do you call it tone or shade I don't know whether you'll have added grey or black to it so it depends on what you want to call it it works well as deepening up that colour <laughs> Let's leave it at that, folks, shall we? Okay. All right. 
got one very lovely bright little fairy. I haven't decided on her uh, hair yet, so we'll come back to her. Let me leave my pinks to one side. And we're going to come down here to our... Oh, actually, I'm going to have to move you. Come with me. I think we're going to come down here to our mushrooms. Okay, so... Um, the colours we had for the dress, I'm going to put on the base of the mushrooms. So here I've got clay rose, seashell pink and 10% French grey. So I am going to start under here. So this is clay rose. Only obviously I'm going to use it a lot, uh, a lot more colour here to get the mushroomy colour I want and then we're going to go in with our seashell pink and then 10% that's a pretty cool mushroom colour isn't it okay so clay rose I think this video is going to be quite long folks so we might even go in at the top here darker we'll see how it comes out okay then our seashell pink oh yeah I might put some um, light umber or something in there just to deepen that up 10% French grey let's get some light umber um, I think there, oh, there's this little mushroom over here that's the only one that needs doing like that on the underside so we'll take some light umber and we'll just make those sections oops little bit of a hand twitch there blend it out with a bit of 10% French grey and it's gone put some up in those little lines there too and deepen it up base there And down this side just a little bit more there we go I like that that's really cute okay so I'm going to keep those colors out there now I think I'm going to go in did I decide I did a bit of like so we're going to use the colors that we used for the um, raspberries or blackberries whatever you want to call them but I'm going to add in orange and a little bit of sand so you're going to think I'm nuts so um, we've got black grape raspberry processed red <laughs> sand first then orange okay but well, you'll see it it works out it looks really cool and it looks quite different to the raspberry blackberry things whatever they are okay so I'm gonna go in here this is black grape and I'm gonna go round the back of the mushroom there get that black grape in nice and deep and round the front here and I'm not gonna worry about the little white dots we can put those in later So I'm going to come up this side, just straighten up. I'm going to have to charge my camera. I forgot to put it on charge while I was away from the desk and it's um, run down. Okay, black grape up this side a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to go in with um, raspberry. Back and go over that black grape.
they're very involved Clara's pages so any videos that we do with them are going to be longer ones um, because there's so many elements to each page so um, it's a bit like Eera's romantic country pages there's always a lot going on on her pages too so it takes a good time to do a video because you can't just go okay there's nine million leaves off you go, here's one off you go um, Okay, so that's processed red. Is it? No, it's raspberry. My apologies. And I've done it again. Okay. Processed red now. Backtrack again. Going over the raspberry. We're going to need to re blend that. Um, black grape but that's okay All right, I'm really lightly coming up to the top alright then here's the trick a little bit of um, sorry this is eggshell not sand eggshell I'm going to drag that uh, process red up into that and then I'm going to take my orange, and it is just plain orange, and I'm going to go in the top there. Okay, a bit brighter than I wanted. Tone that down a little bit with the eggshell. Go back in with our process red. Just give it something a little bit different to the berries that we've done. But it does look quite cool, just having that little shock of orange in there. There we are. And I'm just going to go, I'm just getting the black grape and just tickling the page where there was like, where there's a harsh line. Just so it stops that happening. There we go. And I just feel I need to deepen this up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more at the back look like that. There we go. Oh, I like it. <laughs> and then, uh, actually, I've got a, I like to use a bigger tipped Posca. This is that one. And it's got a black clip on it and it's PC 3mm, uh, 0.9 to 1.3mm. So we can use this for our bigger dots. and then I think it's more than likely that we will have to go in and put um, a second coat on. <laughs> I like it. Something very different for me but like I said I want it bright and in your face. So, um, oops, I do apologise. Look at that. So already our wedding dress is um, becoming whiter. Every time we add more colour, um, just came back in with that, um, every time we add more colour the wedding dress seems to get lighter and lighter which is what I was hoping to achieve. I'm just putting those creases in a little bit more. Um, yeah so it's just a, let's just play until we're happy. I'm th I, I, although I'm scared of fluffing it up, um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm loving colouring these books. Okay, I'm going to have to go off. I do apologise. I'm going to have to go off and charge the camera. I was We were going to do a little mousey, but um, it's better that I charge the camera <laughs> than lose you halfway through a little mousey. All right, my lovely friends. I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, camera's charged and it's the next day, um, again, I, I, I don't know, I've not been feeling great, just like no energy whatsoever. 
Um, so we're going to have now have a look at our little mouse guy. And I did white out the bottom round her dress. Um, so I'm going to use the colours that we used for the mushroom and the dress and bring that in. And we're going to add a little bit of light umber and some deco pink. So from darkest to lightest, I've got um, light umber, clay rose, um, seashell pink and 10% French grey and our um, deco pink. So if we come in so you can see the little fella himself, what I'm going to do is start with the deco pink and I am going to bring out his little or her little cheeks and um, what I did do, I'll show you, is the, the, the little teeth gave me the heebity jeebities so I just um, whited it out and then I'll just make that tone. He just looks a lot more friendly without those big, I don't know, he looked a bit sort of evil with his teeth sticking out. <laughs> I don't know. But I think he looks nicer. So anyway, so our toothless little mouse, it's got a lovely little smile now. So I'll leave that for the time being. And I'm going to bring this deco pink up here. And of course on his little heart nose there. And I just want to add a little bit of colour in there. So I'm going to put the pink in the ear too on the inside of the ear and on the paw we will add some more colour to it obviously but and open the book as much as I can and get that tail can you see yeah so I'm just going in with the tail we will add some more colour to it but at the moment we'll just put the deco pink on it's a bit tricky to get up in that um, the binding of the page. I'm also going to bring the colours from this page over onto this page and I thought the cream on there, we could use these colours for our, the cream on the, the little Victoria sponge cake. Okay, so I've done that. Now I'm going to start with the clay rose and I'm going to start to put some shadow in. Obviously it's going to look different because we're going to put the light umber over it but it's, it's really nice to sort of unify the page with these colours. Also, my hope is that because we use the colours um, with lots of layers, we actually see the colour, the dress is going to get paler and paler. So, there, we've got a bit of clay rose in there. Where else would I like some round his hat? I'm going to keep saying him. It's because I have two boys of my own and a grandson. And so, and obviously the husband, so I am the only female around. So everything is he. <laughs> so I do apologise, I don't mean to cause any offence. That's just how, well, you know, just how I say things. Um, so this is seashell pink, so I'm going over that with that. I'm going to avoid the pink for now on his little face. And bring that, I'm going to try and avoid his eye too. Bring that round a little bit on his muzzle. And then with our 10% French grey, I'm going to go blend that in. Like we did for the dress. But obviously, we can allow it to be a lot darker. And that 10% French grey up there. Okay. Now let's change that up with our light umber. Let's go in with that. So with that clay rose underneath the light umber, we're going to get more of a sort of grey tone to him. I was going to do him all grey, but I quite liked the idea of bringing in the colours we've already used. Gives us, it will give us, hopefully, a sense of harmony on the page. Around his little nose. There. And I might come just a tad around his eye. <clears throat> Here we go. Right, back in with that clay rose. because that changes the colour of that light umber. 
and gives us a more of a sort of field mouse feel. Our little helper. Back in with the deco pink. Let's pull that back through before we lose that. And I want that in there. Okay, seashell pink. <laughs> there, he's cute. There we go. <laughs> I like him, he's very cute. We'll have a little bit of that 10% grey, just a little bit. Just helps to blend it all in. There we go, and a little bit of the deco pink on his tongue now, hopefully that Posca's dry. There we go, a bit more on his nose. Okay, let's do his ears. So I'm going to go in with the light umber and bring that up. We've got some fluff going on there, and put light umber in there. Okay, then we're going to go clay rose. Can you see everything? Yes, you can. Thank goodness for that. There's no repeating this if I fluff up, is it? You can still... Can you... Yes, I think you still get a copy of this. The other ones, I even contacted the suppliers to ask about getting the first two books and um, they're sold out worldwide apparently. So my dreams of having um, my little nudie fairy have um, disappeared but I'm, I'm so grateful for the books I have got, I just love them. Just gorgeous, gorgeous books. A little bit of, of the um, seashell pink in there. And then our 10% French grey. Just give a little bit of... And then our pink. Doesn't that give him a really cute colour? So it's, it's not a straightforward um, brown or grey. Our little field mouse is just a really cute colour. Okay, so move that out of the way. Um, light umber. And, uh, I was going to ask you all, actually, if you don't mind, if you're still here and listening, do you enjoy my? Um, chats on here or would you prefer that I was just colouring and not talking and I've had a lot of people this week um, after the first one that say they really enjoy the fact that I'm talking but um, I know some people get put off by it but I suppose there's mute isn't there you can always mute me I don't mind what I've been doing um, watching a lot of the videos that that play music I can't bear it it drives me mad so I mute them and put them on times two. So it speeds up the colouring, you don't have to listen to what they're saying or listen to very annoying music. <laughs> um, and that way I really enjoy it. So I suppose, yeah, I think I'll leave things as they are unless I get an influx of people saying, oh, for God's sake, shut up. Or oh, for goodness sake, sorry, shut up. Um, and like I say, if you if you're not, into the chattering while I'm colouring and my thought processes you could like I say mute me speed me up okay now for the tail and the hands I'm going to use the clay rose so I hope you can see it's really hard for me to get into here so I'm going to put a little bit of that clay rose in some shadow areas it's really hard to get to, so you need quite a sharp pencil to get round there. And then I'm just going to bring that round on the back side of the tail. Just as a little bit of shadowing and tone for his tail. There we go. Okay, and then 
the deco pink again just over that and then we can just add 10% French grey or white if you want I'll just help blend that in okay and then we'll do the same with this little pour clay rose we'll do it around there give him some little knuckles and then what do we use and we'll pink and then a little bit of 10% French grey, bring, pull that out. Okay, then the same for the body. So under his face here, that's going to be quite dark in there. So we'll put in that um, light umber. And then we'll go in with the clay rose. We can have a look, see if it's made any difference to the dress in a minute, but I'm sure it will when we've got all our colours down. Seashell pink. So does that make the dress look even more sort of fairy white, fairy um, ivory? I'm not sure, but I like it. Anyway, whether it um, whether it did what I initially wanted it to do, it look, I think it looks beautiful. I'm really, really pleased with the page. Um, and this um, pushing myself to the limit, I hope is working. <laughs> and that I'll build more confidence as the, the more I go on. So that's our light umber, clay rose. Don't forget to go back over that light umber because it will change that to the tone of the colour. Is it the tone or the hue? No, hue is, um, or well, tint is when you add white, tone is when you add grey, shade is when you add black. So what is it when you... Add all different colours. Anybody know? Can anybody tell me in the comments? That would be really helpful. <laughs> I put a little bit of pink in there and I'm just going over that with grey. There we go. There we go. Let's give that a brush off. I might do a little bit more Of the light umber around his face, just a little bit. Here we go. And then the clay rose to go over that. All right, I am going to. I'm going back in with my seashell pink. I'm not really happy with that pink that I put on his arm. I don't know why I did that actually. There we go. And then we've just got his little butt. So I'm going to go around the edge of the, the um, wedding dress. Bring that light umber out. In there it's going to be dark. And there. Okay. Just going to bring it up around his little butt here. Go. Clay rose. Put that inside that key as well. And round the key. Go over our um, light umber. We can just bring out that clay rose a little bit further and then we'll take in the seashe seashell pink fill that in and then our 10% grey Back in with our light umber. There. 
Now I did warn you that this video was going to be a long one, didn't I? There was lots of lots of elements to do. But I'm quite happy with him. Let's see. What do we think against the... So you wouldn't look at that and think, oh, it's the same colour she's used with for the wedding dress, would you? It's completely different, isn't it bizarre? How just by adding extra layers and darkening it up, just how completely different it looks. But we have, we've used the same colours and I think that's, you know, just good, like I say, will help with the um, harmony of the page. Okay, just add a bit more colour. Okay, now I've agonised over the wings and I'm going to put, when I've done it, um, Mod Podge Extreme Glitter over it. And what I'm thinking actually is that um, oh, I'm going to make the leaves. I don't know. I don't know. Let's come down to the moss. I'm so scared. I've got the colours out, but I'm so scared of doing it. <laughs> Ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. Okay, so if I get this bit done, let's do these mossy grasses. So I've got um, olive green, and I've got kelp green, and I've got green ochre, and then I've got the pale sage again. So I'm going to go in with olive green where I want the dark patches. So I'm going to follow around here with our olive green. Oh, incidentally, that's why I couldn't get the leaves to work earlier, was because I picked up olive green and not dark green. And we might need to deepen this up even further, we'll see. So I'm just going to go round this with our olive. Bring that out. Okay, then I'm going to go in a little bit with a kelp green. That would lead us quite nicely into, there's a nice line to follow there. Put a little bit of the kelp green up in those little sticky up bits there. That will lead us quite nicely into the brownie tone of the green ochre. Um, we're going to put that in. It's very brown so I'm just putting it on lightly. I just want it to look like sort of mossy, a mossy area. And then I'm taking our pale sage and I'm going to use that to blend. And then we'll come back in and deepen that up even further. But I think that'll look really cool. So if we go back in with our olive green now and pick out those spaces that we want darker. A little bit there. Just sort of rough that up with some little circly motions. And then uh, kelp green again. There we go. I like it. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. So let's do again, let's do another little patch here before I go off and do that. Um, so we start with um, olive green and let's pick out where we want it dark. So in reality this, would all, this patch would probably all be quite dark because it's by the mushrooms. So where's my piece of paper? Just stops me colouring on the next page by accident. Okay. And um, this one. Here. Then we go in with our kelp green. So we get that nice sort of brown olive tone. Sorry if you can hear that, that's my tumble dryer finished. <laughs> Okay, and then the green ochre. OK, 
Okay, and then blend with our pale sage. Blend with our pale sage and then go back in and darken up. So round here. Because that pale sage is really great at knocking greens back, but then we've lost our sort of really dark spots. We go and then the kelp green. Is it kelp? Yeah. Okay. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to commit, aren't I? <laughs> okay, so that's how we're doing the mossy, grassy bits. I haven't really decided on those leaves. Um, do I just go for it? Right, if it goes wrong, I'm going to blame you lot. No. <laughs> if it goes wrong, um, I'll photocopy it and do my rescue mission. Okay. These are going to be bright, so this is why I'm, I'm a bit apprehensive about whether it's going to work or not. So from darkest to lightest here, I've got mulberry, then I've got um, lavender, grayed lavender, and then we're adding blue slate. So um, four colours, and these are for the leaves. I know, they're really bright, but it gives it a kind of iridescent look. So... No, I'm going to start with this one over here. No, I'm just going for it, folks. Okay, so I'm going to take the mulberry, and just like we've done any of the other leaves, I'm going down the centre and making that dark, and we're going to bring this side out. Like this. So just like we've done any of the other leaves, we're going to do the same. Then I'm taking lavender, and I'm going over the mulberry. I'm going to put that on. Just this, the idea is that this picks up some of the colours from the um, berries that we've done, but also I want a kind of a also almost iridescent look. And then we're going to take our slate blue and then we're going to blend that in. And with that, um, those colours peeping through, you'll see in a minute, we're going back with the lavender. When you see that blue peeping through, it's just quite magical. And then the grey lavender. Let me go back in and darken that bit. So it's just slightly different to our berries. Um, grey lavender. I want to bring down that um, lavender. There we go. Being scared and not using the um, mulberry. <laughs> there we go. I'll add that blue in there. What do you think? It's a risk, I know, and I don't know if you could see properly. So we're going to take the mulberry. And I think I'm going to add another colour. So taking the mulberry lightly around the opposite edge, then the lavender. We'll leave a little spot to put our slate blue in. There we go, I'm being a bit braver this time. And then we can just use the greyed lavender to smush and blend all that through. If we even need that. Okay, I'm going to go back in with the slate blue. like it and then I might just take let me see where is that um, is it black grape 
I think that's the only one we've had out. A bit of black grape. Just going to sharpen it. Okay, and I'm just going to run down the centre with the black grape. Just deepen it up where that strap is. There. And maybe just that. Alright, we're going to do another one. Okay. Down the centre with mulberry. I've committed now, it's done, so I've got no option but to carry on. Get that lovely mulberry colour in, it's really pretty. Mulberry, lavender. I don't know what the new colours are on the, in the Prisma set. In replace. I think it's lavender is one of them that's been replaced, isn't it? I know that they're very, very similar colours. And then, before we add any other colour, our slate blue. And then our grey lavender. Back in with um, lavender. That works really well with that slate blue then. Okay, then we're going to do the opposite side. So, mulberry up this side. So in my mind, they've taken all the berries and they've made a dye and they've dyed these little fabric leaves this colour. That's my mind anyway. That's my little story there for you. Okay. Putting the slate in. Then we'll go back in with the lavender. Actually not using the grade, but it's there as an option if you need to blend. And then just down the centre with that um, black grape. There we go. And then back over that with mulberry. Right, I'm going to have to take that edge off because that is going to drive me potty. There was a black bit there where I put that black grape in and it's, I don't like it. So I'm taking it out. <laughs> okay. So we'll start again. Mulberry, make sure we've got that going on. Lavender, make sure we've got that going on. Blue slate. Yeah, I'm not actually sure that we even need that grade lavender, to be honest. I think it mutes down the blue too much and we don't get that sort of iridescent look that I was going for. Okay, that two-tone, you know like we get the paints? Let's just do another one. So, down the centre. Bring that out. Makes sense to do it this way because this one's in front, that one's behind. So this edge will be our lightest. So it makes sense to do it that way. Okay. And then let's get that blue in there. There we are. It is very bright, but we can always do an edging with a paint pen to tone down the pink. But, you know, I quite like it. Why not? Why can't she have a bright, bright bit on a dress? And then the blue. Okay. So then we've got the, the bits at the back. 
they're going to be quite dark, aren't they? So how are we going to do that? I think we'll bring it down like that with the mulberry. Sort of section it out with the mulberry. And then um, just a tiny bit of lavender, same as we've done for the rest really. And then we'll put a bit of blue in there. Just We'll have a, just a peep of blue sticking through. Okay. All right, and then when you see what I'm gonna do with the rest of the dress, that'll make sense. So the wings, let's do the wings. I'm doing the wings. The same as the dress, and we, but we've got I've got Mod Podge Extreme Glitter that is going over the wings. So, and then we're going to have some little sparklies here too. So, we've got Clay Rose, um, Seashell Pink, um, was it? Oh, the blues and the, the blue and the pink. I need that blue any of the blues, a sky blue light, and then I think I had uh, rose pink, and then the uh, French grey. So we're going with our shadow colour, which is the clay rose, and I'm being very light and cautious here because I don't want them to be overwhelmed, these wings. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, can you see all Clara Markova's lines here? like we did with the dress. I am going to follow with the clay rose those lines. Okay. This one breaks up but it comes all the way down to and we're going to join that one and we're going to join that one and that one. Okay. And these ones. Bring that up a little further. And this one and that's going to join there. Do you see what I'm doing? And then we're going to bring that to join that one and then we're going to make one here, round right about here, join that one. Follow this line up. So I'm making very subtle very subtle veins in the wings although it's a dress I still think it will look pretty to have that on there. Okay, very subtle. All right, so we've got our clay rose in. Now, if you remember when we did the dress, we then went in and did the blue. So wherever we had um, the dark, we had the blue on the opposite side. So I'm gonna do that here. Make sure we've got enough of that. So that when we white out those lines, um, the blues showing because that really helps to make it, the dress look white, didn't it? Okay. Like this. Oh, I've been brave. <laughs> I've put it off and put it off and put it off, but I've been brave. Okay, and so I'm just going wherever there is a clay rose line, I'm going either side of it with blue. Okay, and then we're going to take the um, ro pale rose and I'm just going to streak a little bit of that in. We don't need too much. Just a few streaks of it, I think, like... Okay, that is it. We're going to take some white. Um, I'm going to, so we didn't need those the wings. I'm going to take some white if I can find it. I've got so many colours out now. I can't find my white. Where are you? There it is. Just make sure the tip's clean. I'm just going in with the white. Okay, and then obviously all those black lines and those little circles are all going to be whited out. So we just do this wing together. So we're going to take the clay rose 
and it's got to come out from under here where that shadow is and we're going to follow Clara's lines and there might be less on this one but that's okay that, it's not a problem so okay so we've got that line in there's little ones here there's one here so I'm going to pull that up and make a little vein there and we're just going to join it there and maybe there like that no don't like that let's take that out <laughs> take that one out look like a zigzag right and then do this one bring that edge up and then make that quite dark there because we're going to wipe that out yeah you can see thank goodness okay i'm going to bring that down I think it's okay that this top one's more subtle. I think that'd be good. Okay, now the blue. So I'm going to follow wherever I've got a clay rose line. I'm going to follow with the blue. Same as we just did on the other wing. Then we're going to take our pink and we're just going to pull, this is our uh, pale rose, just pull little bits of that through. And make sure we've got enough there because we're going to have to white out all the edge of the wing. Okay. Right. I don't want too much going on on that. Right, let me show you now. If I can, just a sip of tea. I've been very brave. <laughs> oh, lovely. Sip of tea. Right. Take my Posca. Let's make sure we're working. Okay, let's wipe these out. That also helps us to see if we've got enough colour going on. I'll just do this top one with you on camera. And then, so like here, now I've whited this this wing line out. I know, here, on this bit, I'm going to have to, A, you're going to have to go back in again, but B, I want a darker um, shadow line from our clay rose there. Because we've lost the definition between the two wings. And I want any sign of black gone. Right, so up here. Just the same as we did the wedding dress, but I might have to do, a, like I say, a couple of coats to get it really white. Because my Posca's playing up, of course. Yeah, it's not playing ball at all today. I think it might be on its last legs. It's probably all the white that I've used on the wedding dress. <laughs> it's gone on strike. Unless it's run out. Let me get another one because that's just misbehaving. It's just going to have to start a new one. Pain in the butt, but it is what it is. So, um... Sorry. Pump, pump, pump. Right, we're working. Okay, let's see if that makes a difference. Oh, yes. What a difference. Okay. So, just going back over that fairy wing line. There we go. Now, under there, I'm going to put more clay rows. 
when it's dry, obviously. Okay, we'll pull all this out. Don't cover your little circles for now because I've got a plan for those little fellas. Just want to make sure we got rid of all the black. Okay. This is why I said I'll just do one wing with you. It takes quite a time. And then my camera's going to end up wanting charging again if I'm not careful. It doesn't film for long without dying. Okay, so I'm now going to take, don't be horrified and shocked, but I'm going to take, oh I didn't practice, I want to see, why can't I practice without it, here, let me just do, I'm just practicing with a jelly roll, making sure it doesn't bleed through, if it bleeds through I don't know what I'm going to do. No, it doesn't. Okay. Right, so I have got Jelly Roll here. Now, somebody said that these you can order these open stock, so this must be the number, if you really want it. There. Okay, you can see all that. And it's like a, um, this is the um, Stardust. Is it Stardust or the sparkly ones? Yeah, Stardust. So, what I'm going to do is wherever I can at the minute whenever wherever that don't be horrified I'm going to change it don't worry wherever these little circles are I'm going in with this stardust don't be horrified it's not going to stay like that I know it's a bit overpowering for our dress but so bear with me going to fill those up and make sure there's no black on them showing whatsoever. I will go back over this off camera, I just want to show you what I'm doing to finish this wing off. Okay. Okay, let's see if that Posca's dry enough for me to get the clay rose. Okay, so down the edge of that, I'm going to make that around that wing. Really going to bring out that shadow on that bit. Fade it out gently. Okay, so we should have some differentiation then between the two wings. And I can't do it now, but I'm going to take my new pen that works. I think, is that the new one? And when they're dry, I'm going to put just a white dot in the centre of each really carefully. Let's see and we'll see how that works. But just so we've got like a little ring of sparkle. If not, I'll just go back over it with the gel pen. We'll see how that dries. It might actually just be better just left. I don't know. Anyway. So, what have we got now? I've got to go off and do the leaves. I've got to wait for that to dry because I'm going to smudge it everywhere. I don't like the white, so I'm going to go back over with the... I'm going to do them all the same now I've done it. I don't like the white in the centre, so I'm going to go back over. That, that will tone that colour down. But it goes really well with the raspberries. Um, okay. I'm going to go off and do that, finish the leaves, and then I'll be back because I'm getting in, in a tiz and getting all hot and flustered. All right, folks, see you in a sec. Right, let me do some explaining. <coughs> I hated the leaves, so I raised them and I've used the raspberry colours or the berry colours. I hated the dots. 
on the wings so I went over them with Posca I used that same pen that I'd shown you the um, Stardust one and just put tiny delicate dots on and I went over the little sprays of flowers with that gel pen and I'm much happier now the leaves they just they didn't match anything they just didn't go with anything so um, it just felt all wrong and I wasn't willing to get to this point and then like hate it so um, that's what I did I whited out the lines around the front and put the gel pen on those dots too and I think we're caught up now yes so I'm gonna look at this little lantern here I hope that's okay, I hope that makes sense. So they're just some delicate little dots and um, lots of white Posca. So the same as we did for the wedding dress really and I've just left it, it was just too much. I wanted the dress to be really delicate and then my initial thoughts were everything on the dress delicate, everything else bright but not that bright. So yeah, so I changed it. I will show you how to do them in a minute, I'm just waiting for a little bit of that gel pen to um, dry. So let's do the lantern first. Um, these things happen, pages evolve and um, change but that was too much of a change for me. <laughs> and this is more like a, it's like a raspberry themed wedding. <laughs> so it just made sense to do it like that. Okay so I've got three colours for this little lantern. Um, I've got Kelly Green, Chartreuse and Cream. And I'm going in with Kelly Green. And again, I don't want to change the leaves up too much. Um, because the more I change, the more colours we introduce at this point now, the more it's going to take away from that focal point. And I want the focal point to be there. Our, our wedding dress. So Kelly Green. Chartreuse. I don't use Chartreuse very often because it, it's not really a colour I like. But for this little lantern, it will work very well. So chartreuse into that Kelly, Kelly Green. And then I'm going to put cream in there. There we go. We're going to do the same on this bit. So chartreuse round this edge. I'm sorry that this is going to be an epic video. Um, I can't really help it with all the elements unless I miss things out and I don't want to do that to you. So you'll just have to put up with me wittering in your ear or mute me like I said earlier. Yeah there's not there's not too much I can do about it when pages are really involved. You know I've thought about how to I could speed things up but I mean I cut a lot out by just doing each section then going off and colouring by myself that gets a lot cut out but it takes a long time these colouring pages they're not just um, you know a quick thing they're not meant to be they're supposed to be for relaxing and enjoying so that's what I'm doing I absolutely adore these books and I'm not going to ruin them no way okay there's our little lantern I quite like that even though I'm not like I said I'm not a fan of chartreuse it's just too bright for me. It's almost neon, isn't it? Uh, but it does come in handy for things like lights and highlights. And then I just blend it through with the cream. Okay. All right, what else did I plan? So I've got that. I've done the little light. Oh, we're going to do the bugs. The little bugs. Now, they're going to be done the same as this because they're like little fireflies. So I'm going to do the same with these little bugs. I think they're very cute. Like They're going to look cute like that. Okay. So the wings, I just coloured the background. They've already had um, background colour on them. So I will just go around with Posca with them. So I'm going to take the Kelly Green again. And we'll do around the little tummy. Around the front of the face. Chartreuse. Let's fill up his little belly. Oh, and then the cream. And again, then they're not going to distract from the wedding dress. They're there, they're glowy, but they're not going to distract. Okay, so let's do this bigger one so you, hopefully you can see that a bit better. So Kelly Green, 
And that's we'll have a little bit of Kelly Green under the wings. Around his tummy. Around the front of his face. Chartreuse. They're setting the atmosphere the evening before the wedding and the last minute arrangements and alterations are being made. There we go. Aren't they cute? Yeah, I like that. That's really cute. Last little bug, I might as well do him. Kelly Green. Bit of Kelly Green there. Chartreuse. Eraser rubbings from um, my leaves. Okay. While we're up the top here, we're going to do the ladybug. And I'm not going to do it in traditional colours. I'm going to do it in the colours that we did the mushroom in. So, I'm going in to start with, we've got processed red, orange and sand. Oh, sorry, eggshell. So I'm going in with processed red here. And I'm going in with a bit of sand. That will bring the mushrooms from the bottom of the page up to the top, the mushroom colours. And then orange. And then back, oops. Gosh, I'm making such a mess. Back in with our process red. Okay, we're going to do the same down here. Process red. I know we had other colours down below, but process red lightly with our orange and then we'll use the eggshell to blend all that together and I'll go over the black dots in a minute with a bit of Posca let's get that lovely process red coming through there we go all right so we've got firefly bugs. I just need to do the body for him, which I think we will do in, oh yes, let's do that. Clay rose and light umber. So we'll have a little bit of clay rose, a uh, little bit of light umber. And we'll go into the clay rose. Can you see? Yes, thank goodness. So I'm trying to keep the page um, as same as possible. Right, I need a black. Black Posca. Oh, and while I was off camera doing those, that doing those um, raspberry leaves, my new Posca pen blotted everywhere. I was not impressed. There we go. Just put those lovely black dots back in on our little bug. And there we are. And we'll do white eye over those later. Right, let's have a look. So those leaves should be, my um, gel pen should be drying now. So we're just going to do those leaves very simply. Same colours as we did before. Same colours we did for the berries. So we're going to do, I'll just do one with you quickly because nothing's changed. Just the colours. So black grape black grape um, raspberry process red I'm leaving a little gap and I'm using deco pink this time I can't remember if that's the colour we used before but that's what we're using now deco pink there we go and then as you guessed it this side now with our black grape There. Um, raspberry Pr 
process red. And I just think it goes so much better than that combination I put. It was a nice combination, I liked it, but it just looked odd. It didn't match with anything we'd done before on the page. So I'm, I'm happy that I've changed the leaf colours. There we go. And then down the back here, I took the um, black grape around the back of the dress here in the corners where we can't get anything in. Put black grape in there. And then, like I showed you before, just going to bring it down. Just kind of blend it out. So then, and then go through the colours. So, next colour, raspberry. But I'm not going to put the light one in, just so it's much darker behind there. And then I'll process red. There we go. That's how I did it. We could blend with a little bit of our... This is Deco Pink. Okay, so that's those. Um, her Fairy Wings. I know I'm jumping backwards and forwards, but that's how my brain is working. Um, we'll come back to those. I'm going to use the same colours and I'm going to do his hat raspberry. So, would help if you were on screen. So, I'm going to go in here with our black grape. Around here. I've got to work out those leaves that are left. I don't know what colour to do them. I'm quite tempted just to stick with the colours we've used already. Um, and just change the way we, we colour it. I don't know. I just don't really want to introduce more colour at this stage, like I said, so it might make sense for us to raspberry, for us to um, use the same colours. And we could add some like little uh, pink dots on those leaves. So this is our raspberry. That might be quite nice actually, that might make it look quite good. We'll try it in a second. Okay, then in with our beautiful process red. Go over all of that. So, raspberry celebration wedding. Okay, we're getting there now, folks. Um, this is the process, you know. Um, and I know a lot of people thank have thanked me for um, showing it. You know, you watch a, a, a speed colouring or something, you think, oh great, I could do that page when you're learning, or even if you're not, and you think, oh, I can do that page quickly, and it takes hours and hours and hours. Um, okay, so we've got very beautiful um, raspberry hat. We'll just go around these with a little bit of Black grape makes sense. They look like little raspberry bits, don't they? I'm just going to brush that off. Um, we'll go in with some the usual combo: raspberry, um, and process red. And I have to sharpen that. We are so nearly there. So nearly there, folks. We're touching distance. Just a few more little details and we're done. Okay. There we go. And then our deco pink. Yeah, deco pink. I think it was um rose something, wasn't it? Light rose or something before. But there we are. Okay. There's that. Alright. Now her wings. I am going to do blue and I'm going to do um, no 
do you know what? I think she's going to be raspberry too, to help with it. <clears throat> okay. Yep, yeah, we're going to do them raspberries, raspberry colours. Okay, so I'm going to use the bands that we've been given. So I'm going in with black grape. And then we're going to do some whiting out. I'm going in with a little line of black grape here. Usual colours. <laughs> You're getting used to these colours now. Process red. And then our deco pink. Oh, that's cute. Especially against her little pink dress. We're going to have, um, we'll do the same in this um, centerpiece too. So, black grape. And then I might put some polka dots on it so it matches her. Um, matches her little dress, her little outfit. So I'll just do this one wing with you. I'm going to ignore that centre line. Just leave a tiny bit in the centre for that pink. Okay. Right. Then what I will do is Posca it, of course. Can you see? Yeah. So I'm going to Posca, leave that white edge around there. And then um, let's just, we'll have a little bit of a white edge there. And then we're going to have dotage because why not? I think it will look very cute. Very cute. Okay, let's give her raspberry socks. <laughs> okay, so under here we'll go in with the black grape under her dress. So we get to keep that lovely shape of her socks. Like that. And then the usual colours, which will still be on the screen. I didn't, I didn't anticipate it becoming a very pink raspberry page, but with the, the way I saw the wedding dress panning out, um, it didn't, without um, having a million colours on here, it didn't give me that many options, I felt anyway. Okay, she's got raspberry socks, we'll make the top of those bit of dark raspberry. There we go. Right, what's left? We've got that wing to do. I've got to do this. We'll do in um, um, come back to it. Right, with these leaves, so we're going to get Kelly Green, we had Kelly Green, we're going to get Sap Green Light, we're going to get Pale Sage, and let's, I'm just going to put that in here now, okay, so uh, let's do, I'm just trying to think, I want to do it differently, so if we do Kelly Green at one edge, Like that. Sap green light, yeah. And then um, pale sage. I want something up that edge. What are we going to put up that edge, folks? What about a bit of. We'll get the dark green, that's what we're missing. That's olive green, don't want that. That's dark green. I can't find him. Haha, -ha. 
sneaky little so-and-so and we'll go in with a dark green there okay we'll do the same on this one so Kelly green what you can see of it and the dark green yeah I think that I think that will work actually really well because like I say it we're not changing the colours <coughs> we use it we're recycling the colours but it just keeps the page um, from being overwhelming I think so how are we going to do these ones now I was thinking we we're going to add a little bit of pink so I'm going to keep the raspberry and let's try Okay, I'm just going to go in really lightly and see what happens with this. So, well, let's do this big one because that's got the dots on it. We'll see if that works. Let's get you all in frame. So, Kelly Green. I'm just going in lightly. Let's do the Kelly Green um, a little bit up there. And we'll bring that up there too. Um, pale sage oh no sorry sap green light and then pale sage then we'll put that over there remember this is just I've just gone in lightly in case I hate it and then I can rub it out or erase it. Dark green, we'll put that down the centre. A little bit round the base of that. We'll give them a bit of dimension doing that then. Back in with the Kelly green. At the moment I like it, we'll see. But then I love this combination of colours. I used, um, when I first started colouring, this was the comb my go-to combination for leaves. I always used it. I think it's quite a safe combination, to be honest. And then our pale sage. Right, what happens if we drop a tiny bit of raspberry? Let's see. I don't suppose it would do too much damage in the combination. Just to add a little bit. Oh no, look at that, I like it. Just to add a little bit of that raspberry. Almost like a succulent then, isn't it? There we go, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I can go with that. So I'm going back in. Blend that with our lightest colour and pull it through. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. That's good, folks. Right, we're going with that. <laughs> and then we'll do the other side. So we'll do the other side um, the same. So we've got that nice dark centre there. So Kelly Green, we'll do it exactly the same, just mirrored. So Kelly Green... And then we came up there, didn't we, on each little bit. Like that. Then we have uh, sub-green light. Then pale sage. Okay. Then we went in with dark green. Let's put the dark green in. And we kind of, I can't remember, deepened it up here, didn't we? Yeah, Kelly Green. And then we're nearly done, folks. And it'll just be project, go off on your own and finish. And then glitz, it, glitz and glamour. That's it. Okay, let's add our raspberry. Oh, 
That's actually really cool. I like that. I actually really like that. <laughs> For a last ditch attempt at finding something different but not too different, I actually really quite like that. There we go. Right, the belt on our little fella down here will do black grape and raspberry and then I think I'm going to have a gold key because it's a nice warm colour instead of and I'll use a gel pen for that and then process red so our usual colours okay right let me come out and have a look did we do it folks did we I think we did right um the only thing I've got left is that to do. And I might just do that in... Let's do that in those browns or the greens that we did. Where are they? Here. Let's do it in those greens. So, you know, the earthy greens that we used down the bottom for the moss. So, olive green. Let's go in with our olive green. I know it's a bit green at the moment, but when we get to that beautiful um, ochre colour, green ochre, that will change that up. Okay, and then, yeah, it's green ochre. Go over all of that. Actually, might just leave it like that. Okay, so those three colours, I think, instead of toning it down with the um, pale sage again, let's just leave it sort of greeny, earthy colour. What do you think to that, folks? Yeah, cool. Okay. I wish you could answer me. I wish you could tell me what you th what your thoughts were. So I didn't have to go through this process all alone. It's hard work, choosing these colours, you know. Now I have got, um, Kevin did give me the link to a colour picker. Um, I will do it, I've forgotten all about it to use it on this one, but I will do it, but I want to be able to sort of show you how it works, so I'll talk about it in another video maybe, or another colour with me. There we go. That's that done. Woo! <laughs> okay, so I am going to go off and do the raspberry tinted leaves here, finish the wing and the Posca work, and I'm going to outline the little bug's wings at the top too, and then we'll meet back up and I'm going to mod podge the wings and I'll show you that. All right, give me two seconds and I'll, I'll meet you back. Okay guys, we are so nearly there. Bear with me if you're still here. Thank you so much for joining me. There's one quite important little aspect that I had overlooked and that's her hair. So we're going to go in, we're going to do that now. How she got missed, I think is when I was getting very stressed out, I don't know. We've got her hair and the little straps to do and then I'm just going to um, mod podge the wings. Okay, so I've got from darkest to lightest I've got espresso I've got light umber and orange yes I know you're gonna go oh don't use that just wait honestly and a little bow needs doing so I'm really lightly putting orange on it's a very bright color but I'm really coating that very lightly in orange this should just be our underlayer just to give us a hint of color in amongst all this brown it's a highlights if you like. Fairy highlights. Okay. Just make sure I've got enough of that orange. Okay. Then I'm going to take the light umber and I'm really lightly going to go over that. Making sure that I leave enough of that orange showing through but toning it down.
I suppose you could have used, I could have used golden rod, but I like you know playing about with the colours and, and mixing them up. It's good fun. Okay, and then we're going to use our espresso as um, putting the definition definition in our hair. So I'm going to pick out the spots that I want dark. I'm just going to bring those through. We'll bring out some curls around our little face. And we've got curls here going on. And then those two other colours show through. Um, just give us a really easy hair, really. Without having to to faff too much. Okay, I'm going to just wiggle a little bit of espresso in there and then we'll do the same here. So we'll just define her curls. I think. Give her some wisps there. And then I'm just going to put that little bit of that orange peeping back through in some of those spots. And she's done. Yeah, hair done. Right. Now, um, her straps. I was going to thinking of doing them green, but um, let's. Oh, I don't know. No, we're going to go process red to start. Oh no, 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 we're not. No, we're not because it's going to just get hidden in them, um, hidden in our leaves. So I'm just sharpening a couple of colours for, we've forgotten the little pin cushion as well, or I've forgotten the little pin cushion. So I'm going to do that in the sort of mossy colours. So it looks like she's used the, um, uh, moss to do it. So I've got espresso, let's let's put some espresso in there. So she's used a little tuft of moss just to make a little pin cushion. So sorry that was espresso, this is um, olive green. Then I'm going to blend that through with um, sap green light. Put a little bit of sap green light there too. And then we can pick some, um, I'll just grab some, ow, Posca colours, purple, don't splat on me, I couldn't believe that earlier, oh that was so frightening, purple, bright pink, of course, um, orange, because we've used orange, And what other colour? Green? Yeah, let's get um, light green. Okay, I think we'll do a bow in that. I can put some shading over that in a minute. We'll do a little green bow. Okay, there we are. That's those. And then I'm going to use the greens, I think, and do her, the straps on her dress. I don't like that bow. <laughs> Gosh. I don't think I'll ever get this page finished. 
I don't like the bow. I hate it. Okay, I'm just sharpening all our greens, our usual colours. So, just to be a little bit cautious to start with, I am going to do um, pale sage. In here. I just want to see what it will look like with green. I think it would probably be quite cool. Look like they've used the, the vines and leaves and things to sew the dress together. Okay, so we've got that one. Pale sage. I don't think I want too much colour on that. Pale sage, Kelly green. Let's put that in the shadow. Just put that in the shadows. And then back in with our, um, what is it? Pale sage. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Let's let me just get a bit of Posca. Make sure that it's not too blotchy. Let's just see. No. <laughs> We're going to use pale sage and Kelly green. Yeah, we'll finish it off. Let's do that. So, Kelly Green in our shadows. Okay, I've got to sort that bow out. That looks hideous. I hate it. going to fix that then folks. I am going to take white and I'm going over that. Okay, I'm going to have to let that dry. But that will be okay. I'm going to put a little bit of raspberry in there. Okay, last touches. Mod Podge come out a little bit. This is Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. I'm just going to give it a shake and get an old paintbrush. Um, oops, destroying my office. Right, this is an old cheap paintbrush that's actually falling apart so it's just a little um, Right, I'm just putting this on the wings. So here it is. It looks like white PVA glue. And you're going to be horrified when I put it down. You'll be like, no! Spoilt it! But it dries clear with the and flat, so you don't have to worry about colouring on the opposite page, um, with the most incredible glitter. I'm not going to put it on the dress itself, just on those wings. It takes a good while to dry, so don't shut your book if you're using it. Um, I'd leave it at least overnight. Hopefully you'll begin to see that sheen, that um, shine come through. If I tip it, then I can see what I've covered. Can you see that? And it dries even more shiny. It's absolutely stunning stuff. And great for colouring books because, like I say, it's flat. <gasps> My brush is falling apart. Yeah, it dries flat, so um, there's no risk of ruining a page book um, behind. Okay, this paintbrush wants throwing away. <laughs> um, 
but make sure you've washed your brush out completely afterwards because it is a, um, like a, a glue, an acrylic based glue. I'm just going to stick that over there before I have a mishap. Um, and then I'm going to take, I'm just going to take my raspberry pen and we're going to fix that hideous bow. Okay, and then I'm going to take the, where's the process red? Now, if I take um, a disliking to it too much, what I can do is um, white it out and just colour colour the dress over it completely. But I'm going to leave it alone for now. Why? Why? Do you know what? It's going. Is it dry? It's going. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Right. I will <laughs> I will let her thank gosh for thank goodness for Posca. Eh? I'm gonna let that Posca dry. I will colour over it and then um, I think we've done everything. And we'll meet back up in a second when I've done when I've done completely and hopefully you'll be able to pick up that Mod Podge. See you in one sec. Okay guys, I lost the end clip. I don't know what happened. I got found out in editing, so I'm back again. Um, I fixed her little dress and she's got a little heart now instead. Very cute. Um, and we're finished. The Mod Podge is now dry because it's hours later. I hope you can pick up on that beautiful glitter. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. I love this page. I think it's Instagram worthy, so it's probably going to already be on there. <laughs> well, it is actually. Um, yes, I have put it on Instagram. Thank you so much for following. If you've stuck with me this far, I really appreciate it. So I'm going to let you go and um, I'll be back for lots more colouring and lots more fun shortly. So until we meet again in the very near future, take really good care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Night night. <laughs>